Hi, my name is Jesse. And my name is Adam, and we're from the Bam Maroon 5, and you're watching TMF. Ik zit in Amsterdam en ik zit in goed gezelschap. Adam en Jesse, allebei van Maroon 5. Guys, welcome in Amsterdam. How are you feeling? Feeling good. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Well, you're here because of this new album. I didn't hear what you were saying. I live on raw emotion, baby. Uh, well, how does it feel, a new album like this? It's exciting. It feels amazing. You know, we, we've been through a lot and, and this record definitely took a lot of time to make. And so we're very happy with the, with the finished product. Uh, when you entered the studio, when you started writing those new songs, was there something you had, uh, uh, like uh, one thing, okay, we don't want to do that again uh, compared to the previous stuff? It wasn't really self-conscious. I think that we're just incapable of doing the same thing twice. We get too bored. We didn't want to go and write this love again, and we didn't want to go do the same thing over that we had originally initially accomplished. We just wanted to have fun and make whatever music was coming out of us at that point. previous album was one big hit you guys achieved everything with that one single album what else is there to wish for for this new one well we just we'll wish the same thing for the rest of our careers that we can just keep making music that we like and that people enjoy and that's all we can hope for has it changed your ambition of being in a band and being well doing the job you do Not really. I mean, it's still really fun. We haven't really gone on tour yet. <clears throat> you know, I think that we we feel very isolated from our fans right now. You know, we've been doing a lot of promo and, and things like that. And it's much more about connecting with our fans. And once we do that again, I think we're going to feel really good. It's just, it's hard because there's a lot of interviews and a lot of things. No offense. We love you, but. Thank you so much. We have to get back to, to what's important, which is playing for music for people that love it. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, when you look back at the tour you did, uh, well, before going back to the studio, that was an intense one. That was a big one. The last day of that tour, I can imagine that you were actually relieved or feeling glad. Yeah. That's what happens. Like you say, do we like studio or tour better? You do one for a long time until you get sick of it and you can't wait to do the other one. And the last day of our big tour was the day that we filmed the DVD that yeah. we put out. Which was too bad, we should have filmed it in the middle of the tour when we were really excited. Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, the perfect pop song because, well, you guys uh, have well, a lot of pressure on you and then you return from the studio with It Makes Me Wonder. How do you write a song like that? Is there a recipe? Is there a formula? I don't think so. It's weird because we love writing pop music and we love kind of writing interesting pop music and, and uh, you know, not your typical progressions all the time and weird ways of presenting it. And I don't know. It's just It's just who we are, you know. If that's a perfect pop song, then we're doing well. We definitely are perfectionists to a certain extent with, with the way that we write and, and arrange and scrutinize over everything. And that's just fun. It's just fun to do it. It's fun to kind of hone in on your craft and make it as good as you you can make it yeah. but do you know that at the end of the day when you recorded a song like that okay this this is a good one yeah because we worked on that song in particular for the longest of any song that's on the record we recorded it four different times different ways and finally yeah. realized that it came together in a way that was satisfying <laughs> Talking about this love, I was in Cairo like a year, a year, half ago, and there was this uh, Egyptian busker playing, well, 
a pretty terrible, terrifying uh, <laughs> version of that song. Yeah. Did you hear? Did you hear? Heard some some well, uh, renditions of your own songs that were well yeah. special? Yeah, and no, I've heard. I've heard many. Uh, I've heard many people talk about being in random parts of the world, and all of a sudden our song comes on, or a band starts playing it, and they're just freaked out because it's it's reached very very far. Yeah. Is there like this elevator version of one of your songs that you heard in, for instance, this hotel? Our guitar player makes elevator versions of our music. James Valentine does smooth jazz versions. He's going to make a full album. We're going to start a Maroon 5 cover band. Yeah. Lots of different versions of our songs. Yeah. What's your, uh, well, do you have uh, a medicine for jet lags? I mean, because, well, you're, you're definitely suffering. No, I just have to kind of get used to it when you well look back at when you started out you guys that started well for instance in your garage in malibu uh, how would you well can you describe that setting then back then <laughs> yeah i've been thinking a lot about it because i just went through all my old yearbooks and found our i found a journal entry of the night that we formed the band our old band cars flower <laughs> crazy and we were 14 years old and it was just the most fun thing we could possibly do to get together and play music together and It's just incredible. That's what we're still doing. <laughs> oh, it's weird. It's not always rainbows and butterflies. It's compromise. It moves us along. Yeah. My heart is full and my door's always open. You come at a time. You Things kind of changed because, well, compare it to a, a rehearsal nowadays. <laughs> well, you know, now, now... <laughs> <clears throat> now it's work, but now it's the same thing though. You know, even when it's working, when, when it's, when we're connecting it, it's the same as it always was, you know, mm -hmm. but it's, it's definitely these days in particular, because we haven't, like I said, we haven't started touring yet. There's no chance to really connect. So it all feels a little bit strange to us, but I think that, like I said, once we start going on the road and playing music and focusing solely on that, like, I can't imagine it being any different than it ever has been. Does that go for the connection between you guys as well? I mean, is there still the same connection or did things change? When, we, when we're playing, there's still the same connection. We just don't have them played in so long. <laughs> I don't even know what it's like anymore. We're, uh, we're, being, you know, we're being celebrities right now. Yeah. So I can't wait to stop that and start playing. That's true because it puts you in a place where you rather not want to be, I guess. I mean, being, the band, being in Maroon 5, uh, it must have changed a lot of things to the ugly side as well. Yeah, I don't know if it's an ugly side, but it's certainly not the pretty side because the pretty side is playing. But uh, these are all things that we do because we want to get the music out there. Yeah. So that's the most important thing. The video for the new single, Wake Up Call, uh, uh, when did you uh, record that video? few months, a couple months ago, actually. It was a yeah. crazy, fun experience. Jonas Ackerland is amazingly talented. You lied to me. I know. Yeah, it was amazing working with him. Yeah. And, well, that's another aspect of your job that's pretty cool, I guess. I mean, you can get to be everything or everybody you want. Yeah, we were all kind of played cool roles in the, in the video. It's very strange and dark and cool. I love it. Can you tell something about the new tour? Have you got some ideas on how the show will be like? It's going to be great cause, because we're so anxious to get out there that we're just going to blast all of our energy in out into the arena and, you know, have a good time. Yeah. We're taking out the Hives in the United States. They're going to be the opening act and also a band called Phantom Planet okay. and a girl named Sarah Bareilles and a guy named Kevin Michael. They're, the three of them are going to split up the tour. So the good bands before us, and I'm sure that our fans are excited to see us again, so we're excited to go out there. Nice one. Indeed, you get to pick those bands by yourself. Yeah, yeah it's cool. It's great to be able to do that, too, because we also, you know, we got hooked up as time went on, so it's good to hook up other bands. Yeah, cool. And we love you very much. Thank you so much. When you enter a maroon5.com, uh, there's this uh, link to the Red Cross as well. Uh, uh, yeah, how, how come this, this this engagement for these good causes? Well, I mean, it's just really nice to be able to point people in a direction to be able to help other people. 
and we travel around a lot and we see a lot of things happening and we have the time on our hands to sort of, you know, try and help out. So, yeah, it makes the world feel a lot smaller when you travel as much as we mm-hmm. do. And so I think that we just feel as though it's our responsibility to, to give back. I mean, it seems like it's the only thing we can do. Yeah, doing that, I must uh, have to think about uh, like Coldplay and U2 bands that are very committed to these causes, but uh, uh, they get a lot of critical, uh, uh, well, I mean, negative uh, stuff on that as well. That's f- well, fuck them. Who cares? Yeah. It's so much more important to do these things than it is to worry about getting flack for it. So. 